Today I'm going to talk briefly about my fourth painting. I'm a fuel injected suicide machine. Now this is my largest painting to date. It is four feet by eight feet landscape. Now this is my fourth painting but I really consider it my first painting. I used to wonder why I had these different ideas about politics and and different ideas on science and how I could see alternatives to everything. So to me I'm not unique. Uh, I believe that everything's kind of been done before in some way or thought of, maybe lost through time. So I went on the internet and did some research and I came across this book, Thinking Fast and Slow. Now the essence of this book uh, is about how people usually think fast when you ask them questions and they kind of based all their, all their answers on knowledge they already have through pop culture, through their education, uh, personal experience. So slow thinking would be really analyzing and thinking about things. Uh, a quick example of that would be uh, De Beers and their advertising for diamond rings, diamond engagement rings. Uh, in their commercials they recommend a two-month salary guideline and when you stop and think about it, this is the company that's actually going to be selling you the diamonds and they're a monopoly and they're telling you how much you should spend on a diamond. Diamond engagement rings have been around for only about 80 years and it's through this marketing uh, that De Beers have, has done over the last 80 years and putting it in the public mind using movie stars and putting diamonds on movie stars in the 1940s and 50s. It gives us this uh, this idea that there's value in it and that you know uh, you failed if you don't achieve this two-month guy line. Fiona injected suicide machine. My most interactive one and that is you're actually participating when you look at it. It's actually forcing you to think fast and then slow. So when you see that initial painting uh, your eyes drawn towards two things and usually it's the Statue of Liberty and the ape-like creatures and in your mind right away you think Planet of the Apes and there's little things that tell you in the painting that they're not really Planet of the Apes, uh, apes. they're just apes and some look like men. The thing that makes you think slow is after this initial idea that it's related to Planet of the Apes is the man riding the tricycle. Now as you see down here, the apes, you know, this is very ape-like. Um, this is very ape-like. Again, ape-like. But some of the shadows are almost like demons. You know, this one back here, very demon-like. Now, down here, we have our adult male on the tricycle. You know, trying to get away. It's supposed to be whimsical too. Uh, I love a lot of humor and the idea of a man riding a tricycle is such a you know strong image to me where it's like you know it's it's almost iconic but very fresh at the same time. One of the things I didn't mention about the Statue of Liberty, the fact that it's connected with libertarianism and you know it's very important if you know anything about that free will free thought and in today's society and culture a lot of people don't want that they want the government to run things they let them worry about things uh, but you know liberty is one of those precious things of free thought and free will you know we don't want to think for ourselves when we should be you know when it comes to the way the world is being ran as long as we've got a few materialistic things we're good uh, and it's a little bit sad. It's a sad statement that liberty has, you know, become capitalism, which is something totally different.